Round 15 AFL recap. Let's get into it. Started on the Thursday night when the Cats took on the Demons at the Cattery. The Cats with a great win to try and really get themselves going in a great rhythm here. Uh, 78 to 63, the final scores. Inaccuracy cost the Demons at times. They let the Cats kick six straight in the fourth quarter. Uh, and that was without Jeremy Cameron for most of the game. Jeremy Cameron was out cold uh, after Gary Rowan uh, bumped him. Bit of friendly fire there. Unlucky for Jezza, but great to see him uh, in good spirit the next day on the farm uh, and you know that video on social media that's been going around great to see him uh, there and wish him a speedy recovery on Friday night we had Spud's game a, a wonderful game to I guess get around your mates Get around your family, get around your friends. Uh, just a wonderful speech before the game by uh, Chief Jason Dunstall. And uh, that was just great to really reflect on not only what was a great man in Danny Spud Frawley, uh, but just a great cause and really checking up on your mates and, and having their backs uh, when required. The Saints lose 56 to 84. Uh, a nice win on the road for the Lions. Uh, it looked like the Saints were scared at times, I have to say, to go forward with the ball. They kept trying to get it to players like um, Bradley Hill. They kept trying to get it to Steele, Marshall. It just wasn't working for them. And I would have really liked to see a variety of players really step up and have that confidence to take the game on, get the ball forward. But to contradict my point there, when they got the ball forward, they just kept kicking it to a man like Harris Andrews, who was just brilliant in defence. 21 disposals, 14 marks, four of those 14 contested. They weren't getting past him. And in Spud's game, obviously Danny Frawley, he really appreciated uh, the hard work from defenders and uh, Harris Andrews really stepping up in a moment like that on Friday night. So Spud would be very proud seeing a backman doing all that hard work. On Saturday, the Swans took on the Eagles. Wow, they absolutely destroyed him, folks. Obviously, um, most of you would have seen that. 205-34, the final scores. Second highest score by the Swans in their franchise history. Errol Goulding, 32 disposals, three goals. The Swans had a day out. The Eagles, on the other hand, uh, you know, they're on the bottom of the ladder. And I... <laughs> I know there needs to be change in that club, and I know they've copped a lot of criticism, but I feel like, and on the foot, on the Sunday footy show uh, the other day, there were talks by, by Kane Corns and, and about uh, the Eagles in his Volcano segment, and I want to quote Tony Jones. He said, I, I can't help but feel that you're, you know, dancing around their own grave here. And, and I felt exactly the same. I'm in agreement with Tony Jones in that statement because not only came Corns, but we've seen a lot of the media really target the Eagles. And I know, you know, losing by 171 points is atrocious. And I know they've got to be at this standard at the AFL. And I know they've had a few injuries. And I know they've got their senior players there. But we've seen a lot of clubs go through rough patches. We've seen a team like the Melbourne Demons be rock bottom. No one wanted to know them. Their fan base left them. There was, you know, only a few in attendance at games. Melbourne were rock bottom, but then their players stuck around. Their youngsters stuck around. We see players like Petrarca now. We see players like Oliver now. They stuck to the bone, they stayed loyal, they won a premiership. And it took years, and it took a very long drought, but they got the job done. So I know the Eagles are in a rough patch, and I know there needs to be change, but instead of trying to really hurt them, and as Volcano, in his segment, uh, targeted a player like Harley Reid, maybe he's got the mindset to try and stay loyal and be a premiership player and help this team out through thick and thin. The Fremantle Dockers beat the Essendon Football Club 93-61. Good win by Frio at Optus Stadium. They were up by two goals or so throughout most of the match and they got the job done. On Sunday, the Pies took on the Crows. Uh, a very nice game of football. What a game of footy this was. The Pies winning 82-80 to in an absolute thriller. Jordan Dawson got hit high late. Uh, he was bleeding. No call by the umpire. The AFL admitted that that should have been a free kick. Uh... 
as I mentioned, it was a great game, end-to-end -end stuff. Both sides gave it their all. The Crows had control at one stage, especially in that third quarter. Then the Pies come back in that fourth, as they always do. Josh Dacos, one goal, 33 disposals. Uh, he had a great game. Jordan Dawson had 35 disposals. You just have to think, folks, if he did get that free kick and if he did kick that winning goal... You know, you would have thought he probably would have got uh, three Brownlow votes in that game, but not to be. The Suns took on the Hawks and they beat them really nicely. 101-34, the final scores. The Suns go into 10th spot uh, on the ladder, so great to see them moving up the table. Great to see them playing some nice football. Uh, 10 Suns with a goal or more. It was a team effort and a team win, so well done to Gold Coast there. Folks, it's time to get into Isaac's GMP of the round. My goal of the round goes to Jake Stringer. Out of absolute nowhere, this is ridiculous, and only the package could deliver a soccer shot on goal and a bizarre one. And it went in, and all Jakey had to do was turn around and put the thumbs up to his teammates like that, that it was all too easy. Well done, Jake Stringer. That was absolutely ridiculous. My mark of the round, not much to choose from, I have to say, and it was hard to find one, but I did go with Mark Blitzarves from the Cat. A nice grab over Tom Sparrow. Little launch and uh, a nice mark there. And to go back and kick the goal was a bonus. Player of the round. There were two in my mind. First of all, I was going to go with Harris Andrews because I thought great work in defence. But to see the young man, and you probably know who I'm going with, Nick Dacos. It's just his impact in that fourth quarter. There are about 11 minutes left in the game. He was on the bench. They wanted to get him back on. He came back on. He immediately had an impact. And to see him not only working in the, the defensive uh, zone, but really getting his chance in that midfield and still having an impact along players like Scott Pendlebury, along players like his brother in Josh Dacos. Gee, the Dacos boys, they're a brother duo like no other, uh, and they're just so good together. One goal, 37 disposals for Nick, two marks, five tackles, eight clearances, three inside 50s, 375 metres gain. And the crucial part of his stats uh, for me was the nine score involvements, really being that spark for this team, being that main facilitator at times, getting the ball forward, creating chances in what was a very close game of football at the MCG. Folks, what a round. And round 16, not far off. No more buys. That is absolutely fantastic because all 18 teams are in action. We've got nine games of footy and it starts on Thursday night. The Lions taking on the Tigers at the Gabba. Going with a bit of an upset here, I've got the Tigers by seven points. Gotta love footy. If you like that recap and you want to see more of my content, remember to hit that thumbs up, like, comment, and hit that red button down there that says subscribe. Much appreciated. Yeah. For more content, follow me on my Facebook page and also my Instagram page.